Good morning, Justin. Can you uh, talk about um, the role that pass rush plays in, in pass defense and evaluate how you think your pass rush has been so far this season? Well, pass, pass rush plays a vital role in pass defense. It's not just the cover guys. I think that's a misnomer. I mean, and people that are in football understand that. That's a re There's a reason that, you know, at the professional level that the pass rushers get paid the most money and at the college level that the guys that can affect the quarterback in the pass game get recruited the hardest because it's very difficult for the offense uh, to function in the pass game if the QB is under duress or getting sacked. And then uh, obviously you want to have great cover guys, you know, defensive backs that can play man to man, uh, safeties and linebackers that are good with zone coverage and transitions. Um, but there's a lot of routes that you can draw up to beat coverages um, if the quarterback can hold the ball. And so the ability to affect the quarterback you know, with four rushers is um, incredibly important in the in the pass defense game. Um, I think we've had some guys that have flashed. Uh, we've had trouble with consistency affecting the quarterback. Um, we we roll a lot of guys, and we're trying to give people opportunities. And um, that's an area where we can show improvement. Um, I think there are efforts there, um, certainly, but. Yeah, to, to kind of recap, I mean, you, you don't play great pass defense without great rushers, you know, and that that could be, you know, interior edge guys or blitzing linebackers, but you got to affect the quarterback. Oregon has allowed one sack for one yard all season. Um, what do they do so well uh, to, to get a crazy number like that? Yeah, I would say uh, – Style of play, uh, the offensive line, the quarterback. I mean, there's a lot of reasons. And uh, last thing, if I could ask, um, you haven't had uh, Odua Isabor for a while. Do you expect him back? And and um, what's his status? He's day to day, so we'll see how he looks today. He was out there yesterday and getting some work in, so we'll see where he's at today. He's a guy who can help impact that area, right? Um, we think so. Yeah, we think so. He was he was uh, starting early in the season for a reason. Thank you. Okay, hey, we'll go to Jim McGill with Bear Insider. Justin, you've mentioned a number of times this season you got to put the ball in the end zone to win games. And first half, I think there's only a few first downs, so obviously not much of a chance to score there. What happened to jumpstart things in the third quarter that wasn't happening in the first half? Uh, block better. Threw it, caught it, ran it. I mean, it wasn't a there wasn't a huge shift in play calls or anything like that or what they were doing. We just played better football more often. Was there much of an opportunity in that last game to implement any of the ideas that any of the outside eyes might have contributed to your game planning over the last week? Yeah, we're always, you know, it's a collaborative effort. Um whether we're on offense, defense, or special teams, it's collaborative. And so all those ideas and thoughts are taken into account, putting the game plan together. You know, there's a lot of really good ideas, and we always have to consider, you know, the matchups and, you know, what's going to give our players the best chance to be successful on that play and in that game. And I wouldn't say that all the games are the same because the matchups aren't all the same. Did you see some – of the ideas that were implemented that makes you think that you can carry over some of that success during the rest of the season? Yeah, what we need to do is, you know, consistency is the key word there. Um, we need to play at our best more often. Uh, you know, offensively, there were, you know, the third quarter, for example, there's some really good rhythm there on offense, some great individual efforts. And um, you know, we got to, we got to do that more often. And we got to, Make sure that we're putting the guys in the absolute best position we possibly can so they can do that. Okay, we'll go to Jake Curtis. Go ahead, Jake. Yeah, when you have a, a team dominated by defense like your, your team is, there's going to be a lot of close games. Are there particular ingredients or traits that allow you to win close games? I mean, is it poised, experience, a fast uh, offense that can score at the end, anything like that? 
Yeah, we, we first don't aim to be a defensive team. We want to be a great football team. And that takes defense, offense, special teams. It takes everybody. And so it's not by some design that we talk about that. Um, in order to win close games, you got to make some key plays. If you look back to last week, there's probably, you know, five to eight plays that could change the outcome of that game potentially. And you just never know when those are coming on, on defense. There is, you know, probably three or four third downs where we had the chance to get off a field, get off the field um, and weren't quite able to do that. But even, even there, there's some plays on first and second down where we had a chance to make a play, get them in a longer down and distance situation and didn't do it. So those can impact, you know, the drives that they scored on offensively. Again, I know whether it's a block, uh, pass protection, um, maybe a, a throw or a catch or missed opportunity in the pass game. You know, we had a handful of those. And so you got to make those plays in order to beat good teams. And we weren't able to make enough of them. This is a situation where once you do it, and you win a couple of close games that it becomes easier to do? Well, you, you build confidence through demonstrated performance. You know, there's a lot of want to with guys on the team. Guys are playing hard. They're competing. They want to do it. Um, they, uh, they're giving us everything that they have. Uh, but, you, you know, you build confidence through demonstrated performance. And the more good plays you make and the more success you have, you will build confidence doing that. Here we go to Steve Croner from the San Francisco Chronicle. Hey, Justin, what uh, distinguishes Bo Nix? Boy, he's, uh, he's playing at a really high level. He's a very talented passer, and he's not just a willing runner. He's a good runner. So when you have a uh, quarterback that does that, um, you know, he can operate the pass game like a traditional quarterback, and then he can operate in the RPO and the run game um, and be really – effective and so the math on defense changes when the QB can do that and so uh, I think he's a very talented player he's played a lot of football obviously and uh, he's doing a you know they're they're very skilled I mean the running backs the receivers the O-line is is very very good and, and then they have a, a good system so uh, he's playing at a high level. How uh, has the team dealt with uh, the loss of Matthew Sendrick I know both on the field and off the field he's uh, obviously a strong figure in the program. How how are you guys dealing with that? Well, I think uh, people are disappointed for him and, uh, you know, understand, though, that it's part of the game. Matt's an incredibly tough guy. Um, he still provides leadership with his words. And, uh, you know, it's, it's an unfortunate part of football that this happens from time to time. And uh, you guys have a lot of respect for him. But, you know, if – we need the next, you know, next man up mentality. That's the way it goes. I mean, it happens a lot of places. It happens each year, unfortunately. It's just the, the way it is. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, we'll go back to Jeff Ferrato. Go ahead, Jeff. Justin, um, you guys have tried a number of things to get the ball to Jaden Knott, including splitting him out some and throwing the ball to him. Um, are you concerned that teams are honing in on him pretty effectively and I know his two long runs early in the season in that game, uh, the Arizona game, I think were interior runs, but he's getting stuffed pretty good there a lot lately. What else can you do to try to, you know, give uh, a valuable weapon some opportunity? Yeah, uh, find different ways to get him the ball. And, you know, what both those runs were, one was kind of a pin and pull scheme, which is an outside, and the other one was a toss that he cut back. Um, you know, People will play different styles. They may play more single safety or split safety based on their game plan, but, uh, you know, maybe how they match up when he leaves the backfield. I'm sure there may or may not be consideration there. Um, but, we, again, we have to do a great job of getting our best players the ball and in advantageous situations. And so that's what our job as coaches. And I think Jane's a very talented guy. and he's, His best football is in front of him. And, uh, I think he's competing like crazy, like running, you know, pass game and also in pass protection. So I think uh, I think he's doing a good job. We just got to be more consistent as an offense. Are there still things out there that you haven't tried that that you're ready to spring and, and something different you might be able to try? There, we're always looking at uh, different ways, uh, you know, whether it's schematics, formations. Um, there's, you know, constantly studying and uh, – you know, taking the the schemes we see on tape from the opponents and, and trying to marry those with 
schemes that we can implement and again, creating, creating good situations for our players and getting those guys in as many one-on-ones as we possibly can. And that's, that's all you can do. I mean, there's not a lot of defenses that just cut people loose, you know, so you, the best, most times the best situation you're going to get is one-on-one and, and then uh, getting the ball to the guys that can make somebody miss. Thank you. Yep. Here we go back to Jim McGill. Go ahead, Jim. Yeah, typically when the DBs have gotten beat this year, the coverage has for the most part been pretty tight, but it seemed like there were more than a handful of plays in the second half where guys weren't even really in in the zone of uh, where the receiver was five, six, seven, eight yards off. Were there multiple breakdowns? Was there something you could put a finger on that they were exploiting coming into this game? Uh, I mean, we could, if you want to note the specifics, we could kind of talk through them. There weren't a lot of coverage busts. There was some technique uh, that wasn't as clean as we would want it. Maybe some divide rules or, you know, our, our eyes and man to man. Um, that came up. And also when you're playing, you know, when you're playing faster players, the separation sometimes can get bigger. You know, when you're playing a slower player, there's not as much separation. So I don't, if there's a specific play, um, I could comment on it, but there weren't a lot of busts, MEs, meaning I, the guy didn't know what to do. Uh, but there were areas where the technique can can certainly be cleaner. Thanks. Okay, we'll go back to uh, Steve Croner. Go ahead, Steve. Yeah, Justin, any updates on uh, the injured players, uh, Hearns and uh, Hunter and Starling? Yeah, Hunter will be back, uh, Starling and Lou Hearns day-to-day right now. Thanks. Yep. Okay, we'll go to Jesse Stewart with Rivals. Um, so just talking about, like, coverages and stuff, I'm, like, me thinking. You uh, did a bunch of bunch stuff last week. Um, or at least that I noticed. Do you guys have general rules on like how to play that? Because they did score that one touchdown on it, which I think is one of the things you were talking about. Or is that something you guys kind of play week to week? Depends on what the coverage is, Jesse. I mean, how do you know? How do you play bunch versus when you're in man versus quarters versus cloud versus three D versus trap? I mean, it depends on what the. We don't have one defense that you play versus bunch. If you had one defense that you play versus bunch offensive coordinators would line up and bunch and beat that defense. So, yeah, it depends on what the call is. And that would dictate how we play a bunch or a two-man stack or an oversplit. So, yeah, if you have a – yeah, that's the best I can answer that. Cool. Okay, thank you. Okay, does anybody have a final question for Coach? Okay. Oh, it looks like we got one more from Jeff Rana. Go ahead, Jeff. Yeah, Justin, uh, on your offensive line, um, you've had so much change there, obviously. I think that on Saturday, you didn't have a single guy playing in the same position that they played in the opening game. Uh, that's how much transition you've experienced. Did you see progress in the second half? And do you think the group you have right now still has a ceiling they haven't haven't reached? Uh, I think uh, we need to get the, that group to play at their potential more often. Um, I thought Braden Rome got better. Siawape, uh, Driscoll continues to compete. You know, Ben uh, playing guard, I don't, you know, not a big transition for him. He's played there in the past. And, you know, TJ is continuing to, you know, work and grow. But, yeah, we got to continue to push those guys and hold them accountable to what they're capable of. And uh, I think they can continue to play better and we can continue to help them. Are you subbing much during the game, or are you playing those five guys most of the time? Not as much right now, uh, but that's a possibility moving forward. And is that just a, a factor of your of your depth and experience? Yeah, I mean, ultimately, we're gonna we, we want to put the guys on the field who we feel like give us the best chance to win. And sometimes that means rotating. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes guys uh, earn opportunities through their practice and preparation and. Ultimately, they're, they earn their spots through performance on Saturdays. And, uh, you know, we have to always evaluate that. That's a constant evaluation process from practice to games. So, In a perfect world, would you have maybe eight guys rotating through in a particular game? Or do you like having five guys who are just going to be out there together? 
Yeah, uh, perfect world. I don't know that that exists. Uh, we're always looking for more depth, more comp uh, more competition, uh, which drives everybody. Um, we have very motivated players. I don't I don't get a sense these guys don't come out and you know go through the paces at practice just to get to the game. They are trying to get better, um, but I, I think a, a perfect world doesn't exist. Um, but you always want more good players, you know, and that way they can compete with each other and you get. The better, out, the best out of everyone, and ultimately the best performance on Saturday. Thank you.